Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Sara here. I don't really want to start this video with excuses, but I have to say this. I'm so sorry for the lack of videos lately. I have been really busy and then I traveled and when I got back, I got a little sick. However, I did vlog while I was in Paris and I also filmed a lookbook. But I used a new camera, so I have been having some technical difficulties. I basically wanted to upload those videos before this one, but because of the technical difficulties, I just decided to go ahead and film this video and upload this one first. So hopefully I can solve that technical issue as soon as possible and I will upload those ones as soon as I can. Anyways, if you guys follow me on Instagram, then you know that I was just in Paris. And while I was there, I did some shopping mainly makeup and skincare shopping. So I have a massive haul to share with you guys and I apologize in advance for this super long video. Anyways, I have so many products to get through, so let's just get started. The first place I went to was Sephora, obviously. <laughs> and I was able to constrain myself the first time I went, but then I went a second time and a third time. I couldn't wait to get my hands on this product and I'm so happy I did. It's the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. This wasn't available in Bahrain when I went to Paris, so I got my hands on this right away. And it just launched in Bahrain. This is definitely my favorite foundation of the moment. I really love it. First of all, it's so lightweight. It has medium coverage. It's definitely buildable. And it just makes your skin look flawless, especially in photos and videos. I have it on today. Let me know what you think. And this foundation lasts all day. Because it's medium coverage, you might have to add a few layers if you do have a lot of scars and a lot of blemishes, but other than that, this foundation is amazing. I did post a mini review of this foundation on my Instagram, but let me know if you want a more in-depth review. Second, I got the Smashbox Photo Finish Color Correcting Primer. I love Smashbox primers. I haven't tried this one in particular, but I love their just regular oil-free foundation primer, and I thought I would give this one a try. I got the NARS Creamy Concealer in Custard. People will not stop talking about this concealer and I know I'm super late on joining the bandwagon, but I finally took the plunge and purchased this concealer and I really hope that it was worth it, so we will see. I got two Sephora lip creams, one in number six and one in number 13. They almost look identical in the packaging, but when I swatched them, they looked very different. One of them is pinkier and one of them is a bit more mauve slash berry-ish. I really needed a new tangle teaser and when I saw this I couldn't help but buy it. I mean look at it it's so cute. This is the tangle teaser collaboration with Lulu Guinness. I like that it has this protective cover which is perfect. There were a few things I forgot to get so I asked my mom to get them from Paris because she came after me and I wanted the Estee Lauder little black primer but I think they didn't have it so they ended up giving my mom another mascara. <laughs> So, I now have a new mascara. I have the Estee Lauder Sumptuous Infinite Daring Length and Volume Mascara. I restocked on some of my favorite MAC products, so I got the Pro Longwear Paint Pot in Painterly. This is like my absolute favorite eyeshadow base, and it's a bit pinkish nudish, but it works well on my eyelids, so I can't get enough of it. This is one of my holy grail mattifying products. It's the Pressed Blot Powder from MAC in Medium Dark. Seriously, if you have oily skin, you need to get this. First of all, it really mattifies your face and it's the only powder that keeps me matte the longest, if that makes any sense. I also got this MAC lip liner in double time. It's a very nice pinkish nude lip liner. Like it's not too light and it's not too dark. So I feel like it would go with my nude lipsticks and my pink lipsticks. And it feels smoother than the other MAC lip liners I've tried. I did manage to go to Kiko there and I got some products, but before I went, my lovely sister-in-law, Sheikha, if you're watching, thank you so much, love you, got me this gorgeous lipstick. It's the Intense Lavish Lipstick in number one. This has been my go-to lipstick lately. It's such a beautiful neutral pink. It's perfect for every day. It's perfect for work. Since I love the lipstick, I went ahead and got the matching lip liner, which I love as well because it makes the lipstick last longer. This is the lip liner in number one. As you can tell, it matches the lipstick perfectly. Even though I, this is the only lip liner I've tried from the range, but I think it's the best I've ever tried. It's so creamy and it's surprisingly not drying because most lip liners dry out my lips, but this one doesn't, so I absolutely love it. And because I love the formula of the lipstick and lip liner, I got a few others from the range. I got number two, number three, 
number four, and six. I noticed that the colors are very similar. Number two is just slightly darker than number one, so it's a bit more on the mauve side. Number three is a red. I think it's gonna be that perfect Hollywood red color. Number four is a pinkish berry shade. I'm not really sure how to describe this color, but it looks beautiful. Lastly, number six is this gorgeous burgundy shade. I think this is gonna be a great shade for fall and for those gorgeous Bambi lips. And I got four of the matching lip liners. There is one missing lip liner, which is probably because it was sold out. This is a lip liner number three, and it's just that perfect scarlet red, which is gonna match the lipstick perfectly. Here is number four, and it's just a beautiful neutral mauve pink. And lastly, here is number six, which is a beautiful deep plum shade. I got two correctors, a green one and an orange one, which are the correctors I use the most. I use the orange one for my dark circles and the green one for any redness I have on my face. So far, I'm very impressed by this. These are really good correctors. The green one is in number four and the orangey one is in number seven. I got these two eyeliners from the Dark Tide range. One is in black and one is in Magnificent Burgundy. So far, I've only tried Magnificent Burgundy on my waterline and I really liked it. It's very creamy and it lasted quite a long time. It's a perfect dark eggplant shade. I also got the Everlasting Kajal in number one, which is just a black eyeliner. This product is really interesting. It's called a Moon Shadow. It is a water-infused eyeshadow. I got it in number one in Glamour Gold. It's basically a cream shadow, but I don't know how to describe it. It does feel a bit wet when you apply it on your skin. It has sort of a cold, wet feeling, which is so bizarre, but I guess that's what makes it a water-infused eyeshadow. You do have to layer it up to really get an intense color. I would say it's kind of a champagne sort of light color. It's not like a yellow gold, it's more of a really light champagne gold. But nonetheless, it seems very interesting. I also got these two pencil lip glosses, which is kind of odd. I've never heard of a pencil lip gloss before, but I really like them and I love these shades. I got them in number 10 and 12. 10 is a really great nude. And number 12 is a really nice mauve shade. I already tried number 12 and I loved how it looked. And I can't wait to try the other one as well. The last lip product from Kiko is the Luscious Cream Lipstick in number 513. I love this packaging as well. And that's how you open it. Okay, I think all my lipsticks are in this color. But I love this shade. It's like a perfect berry fall lipstick. Basically, I just got a range of nail polishes. And I got a few more. Some of them are gifts. I got this gorgeous rose gold shade. This rose gold shade is in number 23. This is a, a pretty taupe shade. This taupe shade is in number 8. This is the Power Pro Nail Lacquer. This light pinkish color is in number 26. Since we're on the topic of nails, I got this French Manicure Guides. And I don't know if you can tell, but it comes with these stickers so you can get a perfect French Mani. I even got nail art tape. It comes in black and white or clear, I can't really tell. Recently, I haven't been really into nail art, but I might be inclined to do so with these new things. Since we're talking about nail polishes, I did go a little crazy with OPI. So the first one is called My Very First Knock Worst, and it's this beautiful, light, dusty pink. It's the nail polish I have on right now. I'm obsessed with this color. And funny enough, I'm really into neutral nail polishes right now, so these are the kind of shades I'm drawn to because they're very nice and neutral. The next shade, which is quite similar, it's called Tickle My Francy. It basically looks like it's from the same palette, but it's just a little darker. So naturally, I had to get this shade as well. The next five shades I have are from the Venice collection, and this is a nice neutral shade. Surprise, surprise. It's called Tiramisu for Two. And it's just a beautiful nude beige shade. I mean, you can never go wrong with this nail polish color. The next shade is called a Great Opera Tunity, and it's such a unique color. It's sort of like a muted, dusty coral. I mean, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's a really nice shade. The next one is a light purple, and it's called Purple Palazzo Pants. And then I got this blue shade called Gelato on my mind, and yes, gelato will always be on my mind. I was hoping this would be more of a pastel blue, but it's much brighter than I expected. But nonetheless, it's still a pretty shade. And the last one is sort of a white grayish shade and it's called I Can Only Wear OPI. 
That's really cute. <laughs> Since we're on the topic of nail polish, I'm moving on to drugstore. I got this L'Oreal nail polish in Eva's Delicate Rose. Eva's Delicate Rose is such a beautiful dusty rose shade. I picked up the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hours Matte Foundation. My sister keeps telling me to try this foundation and I'm finally giving it a try. I did use it once and I felt like it was quite good. It's very matte and it's very high coverage. A little goes a long way with this foundation. I also picked up one of my old favorite mascaras that I haven't used in ages. It's the Revlon Grow Luscious Mascara. I also picked up these Maybelline Matte Lipsticks in Craving Coral and Siren and Scarlet. This is such a beautiful coral shade. This is a beautiful cool toned red and I feel like it's that beautiful Hollywood red shade. I felt like buying a drugstore eyeshadow palette because I feel like I don't have that many. So I picked up the L'Oreal La Palette Nude in Rose. I felt like it looked promising and the colors look quite nice, but they're not that pigmented and I really regret buying this actually. Anyways, I thought it would be nice to do a drugstore makeup tutorial with this eyeshadow palette. If you guys want me to film a tutorial with this palette, do let me know. I got this Real Technique setting brush. I don't know why I don't own this one because I have a lot of Real Techniques brushes, but I finally decided to get this one. I also got four of these Revlon Color Burst, what are they called? Balm stains. I've tried these before and I really like them. They're quite moisturizing. This is the Revlon Color Burst Matte Balm in the shade Elusive, and it's just a beautiful neutral pink. This is the color Sultry, which is a beautiful plum shade. This is the color Striking, which is a beautiful classic red. Last but not least, this is the color Crush, and it's a berry shade but I noticed it's not as pigmented as the rest, it's a bit lighter. I did check out this brand called Une, which means one in French. So I picked up the Youth Concealer. I feel like it's too light for my skin, and I can already tell I'm not liking this because it's not full coverage at all. It's very, very light coverage. So yeah, I'm not really loving this one so much. I also picked up the Matte Mineral Powder Foundation. This one seems quite promising. I only tried it a few times, but I really like it. And I like the packaging. I like this mirror effect here. And I like how you open it because you just have to slide it open like that. It's pretty cute. I also got this Revlon HD lipstick in Primrose. Such a beautiful plum berry shade for fall. When I went to H&M, I noticed that they really have been upping their beauty game. So I got four shades of the Lip Color To Go pens. This one is called At First Blush. I don't know if you can tell, but At First Blush is a very light, creamy nude. In a heartbeat is very pink. It's a bit pinkier than I expected, but this might end up looking nice. Chalks Away is such a pretty matte light brown. I feel like this will be the new nude for fall. Bon Vivant is a beautiful mauve purplish shade. I forgot to mention that I also picked up the Kiko Contouring Pencil Set. I think there was one for fair skin, but I accidentally got medium to dark, so it might be too dark on me, but we'll see. The packaging is super cute. It comes with a highlighter and a contour shade. It's a matte brown, but I feel like it has a bit of a sheen to it. Maybe because it's sort of a creamy product. I haven't tried these yet, but we will see how they turn out. I did visit Sabon, which is one of my favorite places to go to in Paris. They have amazing scrubs, shower oils, and you name it. I managed to constrain myself and I didn't buy too many things. I only got three products from there, surprisingly enough. I got the Delicate Jasmine Body Scrub, and I love their scrubs. This one smells so good and I really want to smell it right now, but this is sealed shut. Okay, this is refusing to open, but I'm sure you can tell that it smells so good. I never tried any of their face products, so I got their Fruit Face Polisher, which is just a face scrub, and I got their Dead Sea Mud Facial Mask. I already tried these two products and I quite like them, but it's too soon to tell if it really makes a difference on my skin or not. While I was at Dior, I was trying a few of their perfumes and I fell in love with this one. This one is called the Calm Bad. I really fell in love with it, it smells so good. I really like how they package this perfume. So this is the 125 ml perfume in Calm Bad. It has like such a nice jasmine smell to it and some sort of flower scent. It's quite fresh. I feel like it's a nice daytime slash spring perfume, even though we're going into fall. I also got the J'adore Dior concentrated perfume. It's quite nice because it's in a liquid form, sort of like Disney Road, I guess. 
and you just apply it onto your skin and you can apply perfume on top to sort of give you your own signature kind of scent I love it on its own, it doesn't even need perfume on top but it smells really good and I always feel fresh when I have it on They also gave me a tester for their Grey Montan perfume and it also comes in the same packaging but it's so tiny so cute. This one has a strong masculine scent to it, which I really like. I think I might get this one as well. I also got the Dior Instant Gentle Cleansing Oil with Pure Lily Extract for the face and eyes. I had to repurchase one of my favorite serums. It's the Diabolique Tomate Water Cream. It's meant to be 24 hours moisturizing, anti-aging, and radiance. I bought this product a year ago, I believe, and I fell in love with it. And I just ran out, so of course I had to pick this one up. So this product is paraben-free and alcohol-free, and I really love it. I use it as a serum. It gives you this sort of cooling, watery feel to it, and it's so lightweight. Like, you feel like you have nothing on you. I also got this moisturizer from Nukes, and it's from their Bio Beauté range. It's the Multi-Correcting Rebalancing Cream with Cranberry Extract. And it's meant to be for combination skin. I've tried a similar moisturizer to this, and I really liked it, so... I decided to try the cranberry one. Since we're talking about nukes, I got two tinted repairing lip balms, one in raspberry and one in peach. These smell quite nice. To be honest, the peach one does not have much color. I don't know why it even says it's tinted because there's barely any color with this one. But this one definitely has a nice natural pinkish color. I restocked in one of my favorite moisturizers. It's the Empriolis Les Crème Concentré. I got the set that comes with two. One is for me and one is for my mama. I picked up the Kale's Midnight Recovery Eye Cream. This is meant to be amazing for dark circles and bags. I heard a lot of good things about this brand, so I decided to try it out. It's called Decleur, and it's their hydrating oil serum. It's made with essential oils, and it's 100% natural. I got the one for dehydrated skin and combination to oily skin. I just had to show you guys this because the bottle is so cute. It's quite tiny for the price, but I feel like a little goes a long way. I got two of my favorite foundations from Vichy. The first one is the Tinte Ideal Illuminating Foundation. I love this as an everyday foundation. I also got the Vichy Derma Blend Foundation. I love the Derma Blend range because it's made for people with acne prone skin. So you are guaranteed this will not break you out and it won't irritate your skin. If you have issues with acne, you should try this foundation. It's full coverage and it won't clog your pores and won't aggravate your acne. I still have a bag of products to go through. From the pharmacy. I had to stock up on my favorite toner which is the La Roche Posay Zero Zinc. I also got a new Revita lash. I love this product. It really helps my lashes grow longer and I haven't used it in ages so I figured why not start using it again. I got two dry shampoos from Chlorine and they're meant to be one of the best. So I got a travel size in their regular dry shampoo with oat milk and I got the same one that is meant to be for brown to dark hair. I did try this once and I think it did the job, but I still need to try it out more. There are only certain sunscreens that I like because a lot of them break me out. Probably the best sunscreen I've ever tried is one from Le Roche Posay. And it's one of these right here. It's the Anthelios XL. I really love it because it will not break you out and it's quite lightweight on your skin. Now, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I got three sunscreens and they're all pretty much similar. These two are Anthelios and this one is Anthelios XL. Two more products and we're done. Okay, so I saw this product and all of a sudden I got really interested in it. I'm not really a self-tanning kind of girl. I don't tan that often, so I never really get super tan, although I love tans. Because I'm so fair, I always want to tan, so when I see someone with like an amazing tan, I have to compliment on it because homegirl's white. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to get on the self-tanning bandwagon and I got these two products. And they're meant to be really great self-tanners. So it's from the brand Institute Estheder. One is for the face and one is for the body. I got the light progressive tan because I was worried the other one would be too dark on me. So it's a body lotion that you don't wash off. You apply it every night consecutively and then you eventually build up sort of a natural tan. And I can't believe it, but we are done. We are done with this massive Paris beauty haul. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want a review on any of these products, please leave me a comment below and let me know if you tried any of these products and what you think of it. Your feedback would be really helpful, not just for me, but for anyone who checks out this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already and you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's just at The Modest Bell and hopefully my other videos will be up soon and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!